Hello, hello, my dear knitters, crafters, and everyone who came across to my channel today. I will show you today how I made these lovely mittens. I have two pairs here, and I made them exactly the way I've made the fingerless mittens from previous video. And I advise you to check that video before. I will leave in description the link to this video, because even the quantity of stitches I used the same. Only difference, you know, they are quite small and they look very stretched because I like when mittens are quite um, tight and these are very, very warm and comfy and <clears throat> not very large here. That's how I like it. And I will show you today how I made this pattern here. I just invented when I was doing some uh, jumper and I like it because it's not very stretchy and look nice and very easy to follow. And I will give you the um, explanation about this little heart. And now for Valentine's Day, maybe you can use it in some other garments. Basically, uh, for uh, experienced users, I just give you a little uh, review how I made it and for beginners I will show in details this pattern and explain these patterns how I made it as well then uh, I used my favorite method of magic loop where I used uh, three and a half millimeter needles and uh, for these mittens I used wonderful wonderful <coughs> alpaca yarn 100% alpaca from drops and I was making it in two strands you will need no more than 150 uh, grams skein of this yarn as I told I used drops alpaca uh, mix mix is a color because it's not you see this is a couple of different colors here and uh, I just wanted to show you, here is a uh, yarn group A, which is a very thin yarn. And we have needles three millimeters, but I used two strands of this. And um, this is a gouge. You don't need it probably. It's 50 grams and 167 meters or 183 yards yard. And content is 100% alpaca. I'm in love with this yarn because it's so warm. I use these mittens and they are so warm. Please don't don't look at my nails because I have some problems with them. They start breaking all over and I just don't use any uh, cover on them and you just cut them short and they doesn't look very presentable. Don't uh, pay attention on this. Uh, here we have a color which I used 2020. Very nice natural color and ne neutral and natural and you can like use it for, with any uh, clothes. And um, you can just buy one uh, skein and take one thread from inside and another from outside and just pull them like this in different size, uh, different sides and work or you can just make a little ball in two strands like, like I, I just join from two skeins and just wind them on my little winder and then my um, I was ready for work and let me show you oh, where is it uh, I don't know where is it I wanted to show you yeah here I found uh, I, I was using two balls of this. I made two pairs of uh, mittens and this what I've got yet. I was using two strands and this piece of yarn I, I, I have. Then you know you can um, definitely have one skein for one pair of, um, of uh, mittens. And then uh, about Needles, I used my uh, Knit Pro interchangeable needles, this is my favorite. I used cable 80 centimeters because I was doing it in a um, uh, magic loop, but you can do it in double pointed knitting, uh, needles 
it's up to you what you uh, like more it's very easy to follow and let's go then then i cast on 28 stitches for bigger size you just add four more stitches and uh, then it will be 32 or 36 etc your quantity of stitches need to be multiplied by four because we use here two to two uh, rib stitch which is very stretchy and I prefer it to one to one then that's why your quantity of stitch need, uh, stitches need to be multiple to four and um, in my case I've done um, 28 stitches and um, then I, I made a rib stitch for um, I think around 18 18 um, rounds but in um, later in a video I will explain everything in details and after this I'm, I've done one row of knit stitches and then I start on the next row my pattern and a finger and a thumb in this one I've, I've made around I think 10 still 10 rows before start the little heart but it's all up to you you know don't don't panic because project is yours I just want to explain you how to do it to learn to for you to learn knit not just repeat patterns from uh, by me you know you can use any other pattern here and uh, it's all up to you then uh, I've done here uh, the same way I made my increases on both sides of one stitch on my edge and every fourth row I was doing increases till I have 11 stitches on my thumb only different with a with difference with the other ones I um, add one stitch here to have the same quantity of stitches for doing my uh, closer here and uh, basically that's it I hope you will be able to make these lovely um, mittens and um, now I will put here somewhere in, in, on the screen a little graph uh, and I just want you to pay attention that for this um, pattern uh, the scheme or chart will be uh, showing you every row because you will do changes in every round and a heart is made in a um, technique of uh, shadowing shape where you just use you see in them you don't have any difference basically because the heart made in a garter stitch then you will follow the uh, chart but on chart you will have just uh, odd rows like first third fifth and you will do one row following chart in the purl stitches and second row you will uh, knit all stitches and then you follow chart in every odd row and every second row you will just knit all stitches that's why how you create the shadow pattern that's it let's start and happy knitting right first step of any project and I will not be tired to repeat it it's uh, making your swatch you take your uh, needles and take your yarn doesn't matter if it's the same as mine or not because I want you to learn to do your own uh, counting and don't depend of uh, um, my density you understand then you just Cast on 20 stitches. I have a little video about how to swatch. I will leave a link in, descri in description. You can just look. But here we are, for example. You've done a little swatch of 20 stitches and then you just measure it. I have this lovely measure. I have 5 centimeters inside, 10 outside, 
but usually I just take I found the start of my stitch and finish of my stitch and just count them and for my work here I have nine stitches which give me 18 in 10 centimeters which give me 1.8 uh, stitch in one centimeter then I just measure my hand multiply one and uh, you know my density by um, measurement and then after this I can start working your stitches need to be multiple to four and then you measure your hand here in the, the largest place of your hand and then you multiply your stitches in one centimeter it's don't need to be round number to this quantity and that and then you will uh, go closer to number multiple by four in my case it's 28 stitches in your case if you do smaller like mittens for child for example it can be uh, 24 20 stitches for baby uh, or for adult mine are quite small because my hand is not very big but you know they will stretch and I done mine with the 24 stitches you you can probably have 32 36 etc 40 it's depend of your density if you use uh, thinner yarn and smaller needles you will have more stitches if you use uh, thicker yarn like I've done uh, previous on the previous video I've done the same quantity of stitches 28 stitches and uh, five millimeter needles I've got a bigger size for men then it's all uh, up to you and don't skip ever this step because of your measurements and of your um, accuracy of your swatch and counting and math will depend result of your work okay next step this mitten I started exactly like my previous one for men, even the same measurements. Uh, I cast on 28 stitches plus one. I join them in a circle. All of this you can see in the previous video. And I made uh, two to two rib stitch for 18 rows. And now I just want to show you how I do this little pattern on top but everything else is the same the uh, thumb will be done in the same way then I don't want to repeat the same things and after 18 rows as we do now right mitten because this is left one and then on right I just pass two stitches again from my other um, needle this will be right um, mitten and um, I want you to uh, see that you need to have this line of two knit stitches in the middle like here to make a symmetry for the piece all right then we'll do one row of knit stitches make sure you're not twisting your stitches then pearls we will need by back loop and knit stitches we're knitting by front loop and then we continue like this till the end of the row and i will come back to show you how we do the little pattern all right if we are if we are doing um top part will be on our first needle and some we will do on our second needle and then we will start to do both of them at the same time and then top part with a pattern we have two knit 
one purl and our braid will be eight stitches and first thing we will we will cross them in every row from sides to the middle and basically the pattern will be we cross two cross two cross two and then we just knit all this will be our um, fragments and then we will repeat them several times here our pearl stitches and here we have um, eight stitches then on every four we're doing crosses from sides to the middle then on first row we cross in to the left which means the top stitch needs to look on your left then we take stitch from behind like this on our needle take put needle on the uh, stitch put this stitch back on a needle knit and then knit a first stitch voila we cross two stitches to the left then we do two more and then we start our other part then two stitches and two we will cross to the right this stitch need to go to cross with this stitch but top stitch need to look on your right then we start with it we enter on a second stitch and then take from needles cross take first stitch behind this way and then put this back on a needle knit and knit a second one one purl two knits and just take a look you, you can see very well now but we have one stitch cross to the left and one stitch cross to the right and here I will start my thumb on this uh, stitch then I will do my first yarn over I turn my needles this will be my first increase for the thumb then it was yarn over to me now I knit one yarn over from me and finish my row all on this side we do all knit stitches turn work Ooh, sorry pull one in this out we are doing second round of our little braid two knit stitches one purl uh, see that on this row uh, uh, this round we are purling by back loop and um, just check to don't twist your stitches then here we see our two stitches which we uh, crossed in the previous row we leave this one and we continue pulling this stitch on our left side then we will now cross second stitch with the third stitch the same way we go to the second stitch from behind this way take cross and knit now we have just one from this side and one from left side and we cross this one to the right the same way enter in a stitch take cross and knit both one and two and now we have one rest and 
here we came to the our thumb and we need to knit yarn over cross to don't have a hole and we need this yarn over this way on our work pull together we don't see any holes here you have your one knit stitch and another yarn over you knit crossed this way and continue it's it will be the same way our thumb we will increase in every fourth row exactly like on previous video for male mittens and that's why I want you to watch it first because the principle is the same the um, counting is the same just the pattern is different and then I just want to in this video show you how you uh, close your fingers and then um, that's what's uh, the second row on third row you please cross third and fourth and here as well and then you will have your first point like this you cross them and one row you just knit them all continue your pearls here and knit them all and after this you just continue repeating these four rows for your pattern and every four rows you you will increase for your thumb i will be with you in two rows all right right i complete two more rows this is how my work look now i cross them and one row i just need all eight stitches in the middle now on this row we will continue with our pattern from the beginning and we will make our increase for the thumb I will show you everything then on this side we will always have the same quantity of stitches to knit one pearl we start in our pattern again then we go from sides to the middle cross one two three four in the middle and cross to the other side and then we have one two and here we have our previous increase as you see this was our yarn over and we counting from it one two three four we have four stitches then now we need to do another increase then first increase yarn over to me knit one and now we're supposed to have three stitches for our thumb one will be on the first needle and two will be on the second needle one two just check here's our crossed and here are our straight one and we now do yarn over from me for symmetry and continue like this and now <clears throat> I made it especially this way because pattern is four rows and thumb is four rows then it will be easier for you to do and not confuse yourself with the increases because the first cross and increase for your thumb you will always do on the same row then continue working like this till you have on your thumb 11 stitches and I will be back with you on this stage here I am back uh, this is how our work looks like now we are 
continue with our little braid and with our thumb. Let me show you. This is how thumb look like. If you open, you see our increases. They are nice and symmetrical. One, two, three, four increases. And we have 11 stitches in the middle for our thumb. Five on one um, needle and six on another needle. And now we need to separate our thumb and continue working straight. Just check. Here is our increases. This is the roll where, where we're supposed to do increases. But now we will separate our thumb. I prepare already my needle with a contrasting yarn and you just take them from your needle. It won't work. And take six from this side. One, two, three. One, two, three. Just check. This is our straight stitch which is going straight and this is our increases. Yes, take the needle, pull this in and continue working in round and on next row as we had here one stitch on mittens I didn't need this on a, a previous video of needed mittens but on these mittens as we will have this part here we need all our stitches on needles then what I do you can do yeah uh, just yarn over here or I'll show you on next row you just take it from this I prefer this because I will not have big hole. I continue here and here you see this huge um, line here. I just take it like this and stitch, do one more stitch and I think I need to have it on the other. Let me count two, four. Yes, and it go to our other needle. And now we have 14 again. On both sides. And now we continue, continue down. I usually orient when when you put you can at this moment you can try it on and basically you will continue till you come to the end of the uh, pinky and we will start to close our mitten I'll show you I'll be with you right here I am back. This is how our mitten looks like now. Don't worry that it looks like a little bit of sausage. When we blow, when we block it and wash, it will open and it will be the right side, right size. Uh, now it's looking a little bit small and straight, but doesn't matter. Look, I put it on my hand. Yeah, this was an idea. I want I didn't want it too big because I want my fingers in together and I wanted to show you I came here I have 11 of this motifs here done 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 
but you know I already know by my first one but if you don't you just um, try it on doesn't matter if it's not for you probably you know I don't know about smaller one <laughs> but we are doing adult size now and then you uh, need to knit till the end of your pinky you see and this is the right um, right time for us to start closing this part here and basically we will do the same thing what we do on the socks for now let me show you imagine that this is a sock and this will be the same principle just on sock we leave more stitches here and here we will uh, decrease till we have four stitches basically here's our first um, needle second needle we will make decreases in every row in the beginning and in the end of uh, each needle if you are doing uh, double pointed needles it will be beginning of a first needle and end of the second and then beginning of the third needle and end of the fourth needle I think it's no mysterious here mystery it's not no no any mystery here then let me show you how I do it on the beginning of the row we will knit two together easy peasy take two stitches and knit them together pull tight here let me something I lost here pull tight then continue we will still continue with our little pattern this will be last uh, bit here we're still crossing we will go because our pattern will accompany the line of decreases then we will still do the last 12th one okay we go crossing and then we come came to the end and now we need to knit both to the left then it has two ways to do this or you slip one knit and then pull through what? yeah or let me show you or like here we are I turn both stitches to other side turn them looking on my right and then I just knit them together then we turn and we do the same thing in the beginning of the row we do two together to the right which means top stitch need to look to the right side this way top one looking to the right covering the back one and then in the end of the row two together to the left and then you will repeat this here we are I just do this way and here we are and then just want to show you basically we will do them all look into each other all the creases then um, do this now in every row till you have two stitches in both needles and then we just close it 
I'll be with you when we come to this point. Right, here we are. That's how our mitten looks like. Perfect edge here, accompanying the our little braid. And now oh, I'm losing stitches. I'll show you how I usually close my stitches. I cut yarn. Don't do it too short because I put it usually in a needle. Here we are. Two call on a needle. Two from here and then turn two from here getting kind of in circle and then I do it once more two from here two from here and now I will pull it tight I put my finger in I'll go one more stitch here and go inside and just fix here my yarn somehow. Everyone do the way they used to do this. I just will give a couple of stitches. I'll go and give some little knot and go around doesn't matter and then just cut your yarn and here we're done with our Part. And now we just need to make thumb and we're ready for the washing and blocking. Let me show you how we will do this. I have here my stitches. I'll take one. Two three four five. Because six stitch I will I will get from from here. I'll show you. And one two, three, four, five, six, come on, that one, pull, pull the yarn out, take your yarn and now we will start our thumb. On this one I will not add any stitches. I will just take one from here down here, that one which we added and that it will be 12 stitches for our thumb. Leave the tail. You see this stitch which we done previously, this cross here? Just get this cross on your needle. and create our first stitch knit stitch then here to don't have a hole we will take you see like this go into this stitch 
but if you pull it it not will look very nice on the on top then I will take for example this one and I will knit both together and check how it looks like if if it's creating any hole here this one we will tie it later I'm looking here I think it looks all right I will do from other side the same thing and I just need to join it in a circle for now but that's why I left this tail just in case if I need to close any holes later three four five and this one we will turn and here we will do the same thing we'll take this one we will make sure it will be twisted and we will knit both together to avoid any holes but don't don't be afraid because as I said we love this hole this long tail just in case we will need now here start knitting in rounds pull always tight the first stitch three four five six and now we have six stitches on each of our two needles and we will work thumb I worked in my case for 15 rows in your case it can be different you can try it on or if you have if you are knitting for somebody else just maybe I don't know I don't know what you do maybe get some glove from this person would be ideal but I think visually you can you can realize and even I if I do bigger size I, I just try it on my hands and my hands are very small as you see that's why probably this um, size I'm doing will not be be right for you but as we told in the beginning of the video you will make your own math for your own size and for your perfect fit because I want to teach you the principle I will not 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 depend of a pattern and understand what you're doing and when you understand you will not be depend of yarn or needles or sizes you will be able to make your own calculations work with any type of yarn and any size of needles and have the perfect result with any materials then let me just complete my 15 rows and in the final you just knit all two together you will have three needle, three on one needle and three on other and you will close them the same way like you did here four stitches just the difference is you will have six this is how it will look and that's it don't forget to make um, to wash it properly if you're using uh, natural fibers like me alpaca never 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 should be washed in a washing machine never it will be uh, 
disaster if it's not from first time after second time you will lose your peace then remember always hand wash dry flat when it, when you after washing you will see that the yarn will open even more become more fluffy and soft will look much nicer and when you wash you just put it and stretch stretch it to become a right size and open all this little pattern pull it all side all sides like i showed you in a video you do this and this and then all sides this will make you um, stretch all your stitches I will in the beginning of the video you saw how it looks after blocking and washing then uh, that's it in the final just pull this tight inside with a with a needle couple of stitches tied it together and you're ready to go thank you for watching me uh, i hope that you will be happy with your mittens and i waiting for you on my other videos thank you very much